Hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And today I'm joined by Catherine Matheson and from Borders College, where, where everything has dried out, everything is calm, everything is <laughs> not as windy, hopefully <laughs> might be later on today, but for now all is good. Um, and I'm delighted that you're joining us today because we talked previously a bit about placements and all the challenges that that brought during the lockdown. Um, and you had a good story to share. So. I won't take up any more of your time. Catherine, tell us more. Um, I'll just share my screen. So hopefully you can see that now. Um, so hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Catherine Matheson, and I'm the Director of Enterprise and Business Innovation at Borders College, which really means that I'm responsible mainly for apprenticeships and commercial delivery, but we just quite like a long title at Borders College. So what I'm going to talk about today is um, about our kind of life before COVID and what the challenges were, particularly for our foundation apprentices. Um, I'm going to look at what we wanted to achieve um, when our light bulb moment happened, what the solutions were that we came up with and how we implemented those and what we ended up offering to foundation apprenticeships and then what we achieved and what we need to consider kind of going forward and what our plans are for the future. So if you're sitting comfortably, then I'll begin. So um, this is a, a, a manga cartoon, and this is really to kind of identify that um, when, we, when we went into the pandemic initially, um, I think that our foundation apprentices were one of the, the groups that were hardest hit. I think that they, they didn't just miss out on the college experience, but obviously they missed out on work placements. And we felt that that was not only a challenge, but it was time for us to put on our superhero outfits really, and make sure that we could do something different for them to try and provide them with a quality experience despite everything else that was happening. And particularly for our health and social care and childcare students, it was the lack of real work experience that we felt was really difficult. And so we decided very early on that we would try and do everything that we could to facilitate um, meaningful placements for them. So prior to the pan pandemic, we were a very traditional um, offering. So our foundation apprentices came into the college campus twice a week and they had a third session each week on a work placement. And obviously lockdown effectively ended that. And so we had to move all the provision online. Um, our students responded really, really well. And I think at that point, we hoped that things would return to normal. We'd be able to pop them back into their physical workplaces and um, everything would be fine. But of course, as we all know, as time went on, um, it became increasingly apparent that that was not going to happen and that we needed to start thinking a little bit more creatively. So foundation apprenticeships were developed originally to provide senior phase school pupils with the ability to experience some real life work situations and also undertake a recognised qualification. At Borders College, we offer quite a wide range of different foundation apprenticeships. But for the purposes of this, I'm going to specifically talk about health and social care and child care. The biggest part of that for our apprentices is that work placement and the ability to spend some time in a work environment and to work with service users, not only to kind of experience that, but also to learn a bit more about the legislation and the sort of policies and things that govern the way that people work and the sort of things that they do. So for me, I think when the pandemic kind of took hold and it became apparent that face-to-face -face placements were not gonna be achievable, um, we thought it was really important that we tried to find a way to allow our foundation apprentices to engage with service users in a way that was going to be meaningful. So although we prepared all the work for the customised units, we were quite keen to make sure that if we possibly could, that our students achieved a full vocational qualification instead. So we started to think about, could we look at something that we could start online, but that we could move face to face once it was um, possible and as soon as the restrictions allowed. So it was really during some of our um, team sessions that we did a lot of brainstorming and that's when we kind of had our light bulb moment and we looked at who our potential partners might be. 
Um, usually we work very closely with the local authority on placements for foundation apprentices. But obviously, during COVID, they had a lot of other priorities um, in terms of health and social care and, you know, um, crisis management and things like that. Um, our nursery schools were closed, so there was no opportunity for placements there. And the other care services were really quite understaffed and just struggling to meet the requirements of their own service users. So we kind of knew that that, that, that wouldn't be um, a, a sort of potential for placements. So we decided that we would start a conversation with some organisations who we felt would be willing to enter into um, a partnership with us, but also who might come up with some creative solutions. And one of the um, companies that we looked at was a company called Streets Ahead, who provide um, social care support for service users in their own homes. We have a really long standing relationship with this company. We provide all their vocational qualifications and we do a lot of short coursework with them as well. So we knew that, you know, kind of the way that they worked um, and we felt that we had a relationship with them that we could build on. Um, they were very, very positive when we suggested this to them and they were very keen to try and work with us to provide suitable placements. Um, I think we realised very early on that the students would require more support than usual and that any sort of virtual placement was going to be difficult. But I think the fact that we were all willing to work together and that we, we were sort of all on board from the very beginning meant that we had a really clear idea about what we were hoping to achieve. And we were very um, enthusiastic and proactive in trying to make that happen. So Streets Ahead um, identified suitable service users and they also identified a member of staff who would be able to provide support to the service users during placements. And we worked really closely with them to make sure that we covered all the health and safety requirements, GDPR, making sure that students had appropriate disclosure certificates and things like that. And we also involved the school so that they were aware of what was happening and also the student's assessor so that everybody was involved, that they knew what was happening and that we could provide kind of wraparound support for the students to um, enable them to start developing online activities that they'd be able to carry out with service users. We also worked with an organisation called the TD1 Youth Hub to try and provide support for our childcare students. Um, and again, they were really on board with this. Um, a couple of our students had already been doing some volunteer work with them. And so again, they were just really positive and very keen to help and very sort of on board with what we were trying to do. Um, we also knew that these organisations would be able to offer face to face placements once it was safe to do so. And we felt that that was really important because it provided continuity for the students, but also it would allow them to further develop their relationships with the service users. Um, we had a lot of conversation with the schools as well, um, because their timetables had obviously been disrupted by the pandemic. So we wanted to make sure that the students were able to carry out virtual placements at a day and time that fitted in with their timetable, but could also um, accommodate the um, needs of the services with which we were engaging. I think when we started virtual placements that everybody felt it was a little bit awkward um, because when you do something like this for the first time, it does feel a bit forced and a bit strange. But I think our students were so positive and so enthusiastic and they were just willing to try. And I think that made a massive amount of difference. Um, so they started doing things like craft workshops. They did online cooking and baking with service users. They did sessions on Scottish culture and they provided, you know, and produced a really varied timetable of activities that they could carry out with different service users. Um, the childcare students um, were also very involved with some young, young children. So they did things like creating um, Play-Doh monsters. They did um, lots of different activities like Simon Says, they did show and tell. 
um, and things like that, which were really nice. And so as part of this process, we spent a lot of time discussing it with parents as well, because obviously they'd all got young children at home. So it was really important that parents were on board, but also as you can see in those pictures that the parents were able to set up the laptops and iPads and things to facilitate those placements to go ahead. Um, and we're able to provide a little bit of background supervision just in case things got a little bit out of hand, you know, and the, the student wasn't able to control things. Um, and, you know, as soon as they were able, they did some outdoor activities as well. So things like building some snowmen and, and doing some things like that as well. Um, you know, and, and I think, you know, that that did make a, a kind of big difference. Um, as I've said, every student had a dedicated assessor, so they were able to provide support and they could carry out observation as well during the placements, which was really useful. We also um, did some additional online tutorials as well. So the students spent time every week with their assessor online, but also we wanted to make sure that they didn't miss out on the usual activities that we do as part of the foundation apprenticeship. Um, and we do have quite a lot of outside speakers usually. So um, one of the things that we try and encourage our students to do is to spend time outside in a forest school. And again, obviously that wasn't possible. So the forest school came online and did sessions with us instead um, and talked about the, you know, the different aspects of working in a forest school and you know, how they managed health and safety and things like that as well. Um, and they did some work again around building Play-Doh dinosaurs and the sort of activities they would normally do outside. Um, and we also invited speakers in to talk about continuous professional development. We did things like healthy living, play, legislation, you know, communication, health and safety and things like safeguarding as well. And the students also took part in kind of practical online sessions. Um, so they did a scavenger hunt. They obviously made Play-Doh um, and things like developing a collage and doing, you know, some outdoor play and things like that as well. Um, as part of um, the work that we did, we also wanted to give our childcare students a sort of breadth of experience. So it wasn't just about working with very young children, but could they work with some older children as well? So um, again, in discussion with parents and people who were willing to support us, we developed some online activities for older children. So you can see in, in, in this that they did some origami, they did some baking, um, and they also did some sessions around Scottish culture and things like that as well. Um, and I think that really provided our foundation apprentices with a much broader um, experience because very often they spend a lot of time in nurseries but they don't tend to work with older children so I think that that was you know that was just really important and um, throughout the project we wanted to ensure that we collaborated not only with our partners um, but also internally so we identified a lead officer who could meet with all the partners and stakeholders virtually every two weeks and that allowed them to monitor the student progress to identify challenges and to provide support to provide to find um, solutions for that. Um, and we also obviously carried out regular reviews online, and that was in, included the student, the college assessor and the employer, just again to provide feedback and continued support. I think the relationship between the student and the college and the employer were really, really crucial in identifying issues early and resolving these before they became bigger problems. Um, involving the service users in this whole pr process um, allowed the students to apply their theoretical learning in practice, but also to understand safeguarding in what was not a natural environment for them. Um, but also to understand how delivery of services can happen virtually, it doesn't always have to be in person. And I think the whole process kind of encouraged creativity and people to think differently about how we delivered placements to make sure that they were successful and that service users, users were able to engage in a really positive and productive way. I think our students also had to learn to manage their time um, effectively um, because, you know, usually if they're coming to college and things, they there's a bus, somebody provides that for them, somebody's there to tell them where to go and what to do all the time. They were very much responsible for managing their own diaries. And I think that they gained a lot of valuable meta skills as part of this. You know, they needed to prepare really carefully and they had to consider their online presence um, so it made them much more socially aware, but also very resilient and adaptable as part of it. 
Um, our college assessors supported the students to work with the service users to look at the things that they would like to do. So what were the most suitable tasks that they you know, could, could do to achieve the students' learning outcomes, but also to engage with the, the service users. So that was things like baking and making cards, playing games. Um, and I think this helped them to develop language skills as well, um, and, and, and also some creative thinking. So once um, we were able to meet face to face, um, the icing on the cake was actually for the service users to be able to meet the students um, themselves. And I think the smiles on this next picture kind of say it all. That's one of our foundation apprentices meeting um, her service user for the first time, and they really, really enjoyed that. So what did we achieve in the end? Um, we had successful virtual placements for our foundation apprentices, which led to face to face placements once they were safe to do so. And it allowed our social services and healthcare and social services children and young people uh, students to successfully complete the foundation apprenticeships. I think it gave us stronger relationships with some of our stakeholders, and I think particularly with the schools. Um, quite often with foundation apprentices, it's a bit arm's length, but I think in this instance, we work very, very closely with the skills. And I think that definitely has built relationships that we're now taking forward um, much more. I think it developed our confidence that we were able to offer placements, but both virtually and in person. And I think we improved our knowledge greatly um, in very rural areas. Virtual placements can be really valuable. We have a lot of issues in the borders around transport. And so actually, if you can offer hybrid placements where they do some face to face and some online, then that actually can be very, very um, valuable going forward. There were things that we needed to consider, though, um, I think we're lucky we have quite small groups of foundation apprentices. Um, implementing something like this on a much bigger scale, I think, would be very difficult. Um, but I think um, the fact that everybody was so enthusiastic and very committed um, made all the difference. And I think that is essential for success. Um, you don't necessarily have to have all the answers, but if you're enthusiastic, then that, that goes a long way um, towards making things work. And I think one of the things that we have to consider all the time is the rurality of our, of our um, region and making sure that people have good internet connections. So one of the things that we did as part of this as well was just making sure that all our students were able to connect really easily to the internet. And that meant things like pr providing them with dongles and things like that if necessary. So um, I think at the moment, we're keen to ensure that our students have face-to-face -face placements wherever possible. But I think that we know now that we can use alternatives and that this sort of model can work really successfully and that we can adapt really quickly to new challenges. And I think for some students who perhaps find attending a physical placement difficult for whatever reason, then actually a virtual placement can provide them with the necessary learning and the real work experience to evidence vocational qualification um, when it's used in, in conjunction with a more traditional placement. So I suppose the question would be, would we do it again? Well, absolutely, yes. We learned so much. And I think we realised that with creativity and a little bit of flexibility, you can support your students to achieve no matter what. Thank you very much. That's, that's such a good story, Catherine. I mean, it's it, it, it's I, we've seen quite a few examples of, of virtual placements and people doing what they can to bring that real experience to students. But the fact that you were ab able to get service users involved in the process and you did it all together to deliver a really meaningful experience is is just it, it it's astounding. Um, now, and, and I'm sure I'll, I'll open the room um, to questions in, in, in a second, but I, I just have to ask then, was the experience positive for everyone involved? Like, did you, did this go without a hitch? Did every student just take to this like a duck to water? <laughs> is is no, that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, obviously some students find that, um, find things like this much more difficult. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of students even now struggle with using cameras and being visible online. And I think, you know, we had to have those conversations with students and say, you know, it's really important, particularly if you're working with young children, they need to be able to see you, you've got to be able to engage. 
And so for some students, it, 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 you know, it, it's never going to work. Some, some students just would really struggle with that. But I, I think if you can be flexible about it, then actually that's what the, the key is. Um, you know, so I think going forward, you know, for, for some students, this, this kind of flexible, you know, hybrid model could work really well. Um, for others, it'll be a face-to-face -face placement or, or nothing really, because that, that's what suits them. And, and you're right, it introduces so many more skills as well. The skills that you were able to, to cover, the meta skills, but the digital skills as well, and putting it in a really meaningful context. I, I just have to say that during lockdown, when, when my kids were at home, I could have really used you and your students. But <laughs> Walter, you have a question. Catherine, what adjustments had to be made to the assessment processes for these aspects of the of the of the foundation apprenticeship? Um well, obviously, the SQA um, had made adjustments anyway in terms of producing cust customised units, which kind of um, meant that, that you didn't have to do placements at all. But I think we, we've we always been very committed to people doing a complete vocational qualification, if possible. But I think, you know, we, we knew that they would have to do some face-to-face -face placement at some point. Um, so we were being very flexible about what we did and kind of bearing in mind what the requirements of the customised units would be so that if necessary, we could move the students onto those if we needed to. Um, but also looking at things like um, the triple SC guidance on the use of video observation um, and things like that, making yeah. sure that, yeah. you know, people have got the right paperwork in place, that you've done disclosures, that parents have, have you know, signed something to say that they're happy for their children to take part in this and, and, and so on. You know, so it's, it's you know, it, yeah, there's quite a lot goes on in the background as well in, in terms of just making sure that you've got all that in, in place. Yeah, that, that's that's quite some effort and mm -hmm. all for the benefit of your your youngsters. So well done. Mm, thank you. I mean, I think, again, you know, we deal with quite small numbers. Um, if we'd had 40 foundation apprentices, I think it would have been very, very difficult. We were dealing with less than 10. So actually it, it becomes manageable. You know, you can put the time in to do that and make sure that they're supported. I think if we'd had 40, that it would have been customised units and that, that would have been that, unfortunately. I think, though, the, the fact that you, even working with a smaller group, the fact that you took it to that extent and gave them a real experience is really, really meaningful. What, what was the feedback directly from the students and what did they say about the whole process? The feedback was really good, actually, and three of them have all gone on to university and all three have said, you know, that, that it was their foundation apprenticeship that actually helped their university application. So, so one of the students has gone to, I think it's Strathclyde, to do mental health nursing. And she said, you know, I felt quite disadvantaged when I first went because everybody else seemed to have a lot of experience. She said, but I talked about my foundation apprenticeship and what I'd learned and, and how my placement had gone. And she said, and, and that seemed to really impress, you know, the university. And so she got a place to, to, to study that. We've got another one who's doing... Um, BA in education, I think. Um, so, you know, yeah, so again, and, and she said too that, that it was her foundation apprenticeship that kind of made the difference and having that sort of real work experience, I suppose. I, I think that's the key. I mean, the foundation apprenticeship, when it started out, um, quite a few years ago now, but the idea is that you wanted to give people a real experience. Mm -hmm. Now, there's, there's definitely advantages here in the sense that you're removing certain barriers in terms of travel, um, just connecting with people. What's, what's the potential here for working with students who are based more remotely as well? Could, could you consider that this would add to the offer? Yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, I think there's always going to be a need for face to face because, you you know, they need that experience. They need to be in a real work environment and and to have that that kind of opportunity to work with other staff and, and bigger groups of children and, and things like that. But I think, you know, because it, it, particularly in the east of our region, the transport links are not great. So for students, for example, who come in to college from Eyemouth, that's nearly two hours on the bus. It's a long journey. So the more things that you can do virtually, the better, you know, 
Um, so a lot of their learning happens online. Um, but I think certainly if you've got somebody who is in a very rural location or perhaps a student who's got some health problems or something like that, that means that, that they may be a little bit more wary about going into a face-to-face -face placement, then actually this sort of hybrid way of working could, could work really well. I see, Nick, you have a question. You have your hand raised. Yeah, um, thanks for that presentation. I was just wondering, do you think this is going to be kind of the future for how you work your um, foundation apprenticeships, that hybrid approach? Because it, it feels like it um, creates a lot more accessibility, especially then when you were talking about potentially people with um, maybe disabilities or um, mm -hmm. maybe people that are very, very rural and struggled with travel. Do you think this could be an option for them to really widen that accessibility to it? Yeah, I think I think so, definitely. I mean, I think, as I say, you're always going to need some fa some face to face contacts. You know, that that's really important. Um, and, and certainly I think the students prefer that because they like going out into a real work environment and actually, you know, mixing with people. But but certainly, you know, for access, accessibility and students, like you say, who've perhaps got a disability or something, then yes, I think it could be really, really useful. Um, and providing, you know, you've got organisations who are willing to support that, yeah. then, you know, we would definitely do it again, um, definitely. And I think it's that, that close working partnership that mm. you have that really adds to the experience that's really important. Just from a, a technical point of view, in terms of kit, because you talk a bit about the connectivity, um, and I we, we know that over this period, s some students have are connecting with their phones. You know, mm -hmm. the they're able to connect, they're able to work, but the kind of kit that you need to have a full experience, what what what's needed here, Catherine? What's needed at a minimum? Well, so so all the school pupils in the borders are provided with an iPad anyway. Um, so, you know, we knew that they would all have a device. However, if for any reason they struggle with that, as a college, we kind of made the commitment during the pandemic to issue laptops if students required them. So we handed out something like 600 laptops last year. I mean, it was huge numbers. Um, but also because, again, parts of the borders are really well served with internet connectivity, Others are just dreadful. So what we did was we would provide dongles to people if they were struggling. <clears throat> and so basically it comes like with a, a, a prescribed amount of data on it so that they can use it and do what they need to do. But obviously you've still got a little bit of control um, if they use it all, then you, they've got to be able to justify what, what that's all about. But yeah, so we, we, we do things like that as well. I mean, that, that's really important. And, and we were talking earlier about iPads are great. They are fantastic functional devices but sometimes you know a keyboard <laughs> can definitely come in useful yeah, definitely. especially have your assignments to do and in in that assessment in the sense of appearing um on camera did students struggle with the idea of just turning their cameras on because we know that from our experiences with teams and yeah. zoom um so how, how did you get people yeah. to, to get comfortable i think some did initially um but uh, you know <laughs> I mean, we just talk to people and, and say, you know, if you're going to do a virtual placement with a service user, they've got to be able to see you. You can't have that that dialogue and that interaction or you can't play Simon Says with somebody if you can't see them, you know, or, or whatever it is. And, you know, again, I think small numbers of students, you know, and they were committed to doing it and, and so enthusiastic about it. Um, and because we'd done the first part, you know, when we very first went into lockdown, we spent a lot of time with them online. So we'd kind of done that preparatory work and then their placements kicked in sort of towards the end of the year um, once we'd got everything organised. So we'd already had that sort of time for their assessor to spend with them and, and talk through, you know, using your camera and making sure that, you know, you, sp you look at the camera when you, you're speaking and things like that. And, you know, um, yeah, put, putting your background on so that actually, you know, they can't see your bedroom behind you or whatever it is, you know. So, yeah, so we've kind of done that piece of work beforehand. I, I, I think it's just, you know, it's a testimony to what the effort that you've put in you've had such good results and such good feedback um you know and and if no one said it you know well done you, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and the team <laughs> okay so un unfortunately that's all we have time for for this recorded part of the session um thanks again so much for sharing your story catherine i look forward what, to what you're going to do in the future as well so we'll have to have you back yeah, until then 
<laughs> everyone, <laughs> thanks for joining us. And for you out there, of course, as always, stay safe.